Hey guys, Doug here. I'm making a video about videos that I didn't make. <laughs> it's been a crazy week and uh, I did a whole bunch of stuff. Started to film uh, a few different videos and then you know how I've said in the past I over overthink things and think they end up being dumb or whatever but uh, anyway I thought I just let's just mix them all up and uh, put it into one video and uh, give you a taste of my week and uh, maybe some fun ideas so let's just jump right in so it's Friday night and uh, it's a beauty night and I thought I'd just sit on the porch and do some whittling and at the same time there's a thunderstorm rolling in it was just perfect it was getting dark and I set up a spotlight and I said I'm gonna whittle a little pumpkin head man so the week before I was at uh, camping and I made this guy so I thought uh, there was some uh, some interest in it so I thought I'll just make a I'll make one for the a video's sake and this is the guy I ended up making however I had uh, the lighting just was not bright enough and as pretty as it was and with the sound of the crickets and the storm and the rain it was it was not a good video and then I thought after the fact that that's okay because you know what this is this is last year's video the pumpkin head and if you take the small man video and put the pumpkin from last year's video on the man you've got a pumpkin head man so I thought ah forget it I enjoyed my time by myself turned the camera off and uh, just carried on so that was my Friday night I remember that uh, wood spirit video that I made using the cedar logs that I just uh, randomly found laying around <laughs> well I only had a little piece left so I thought I'm gonna go put it dig out my crappy old lathe and uh, I'm gonna turn it into an acorn shape and then of course with the acorn you gotta put a face on it so that's what I made with the leftover piece of that uh, wood spirit log but uh, let's have a little chat about the lathe because I can show you a couple things and why I don't use the lathe that I have very often this is my lathe this is a lathe I've had for probably who knows eight ten years and I don't like using it anymore in fact I'm scared of it but as you get what you pay for it with everything this was this is a master craft and uh, I probably got it on sale from Canadian Tire years ago and uh, it was good to introduce me to wood turning but yeah before Christmas this year I like to uh, upgrade and right at this point uh, I think I'm looking at maybe a Rikon lathe a little bit bigger still could be table mounted I may go with the iron legs but we'll see but that's just a, a wish list for Christmas but I don't trust this one because if you ever buy anything and it has plastic on it walk away forget it because I over tighten everything and after a time I can just keep tightening and tightening and tightening and everything is stripped so even the, the, the tail here I can tighten that up and then when I when I crank it in I can actually see this moving back so that's just dangerous and uh, yeah you get what you pay for but that said I want to show you something else I have the uh, set of high-speed steel uh, lathe tools chisels but if you want to get into lathe turning and you're scared of how to sharpen them because they do have to be sharpened a lot and you don't want to buy grinders and jigs and whatnot carbide tips game changer I have here this is the uh, rough out one square got a round one for contouring and uh, just like a detail one for cutting in and these are great if you have no experience you can still be turning wood within half an hour they just go flat on here and you just push them straight in you're not finding angles or turning or anything it's just straight in and you're you're out to the races so this lathe is going to uh, probably end up getting a little buffing wheel on here and I'm gonna have like a a variable speed buffing wheel that's all it's good for so watch in the future I'm going to uh, do a little bit more turning and uh, gonna have a better lathe from from one nut to another I actually started this project a couple days before this guy 
but I had to wait 72 hours. So remember that craft I did with the uh, walnut shells? I made those little owls on the board. Well, what I decided to do was uh, take some little slices. What? A good healthy eighth of an inch slice and uh, we're shopping in Sophie's craft room and I sell this box of easy cast clear casting epoxy so this is a two-part epoxy that you mix up equal parts this came from uh, Michael's craft store I'm sure Hobby Lobby etc has the same same idea but I mixed it this is clear or opaque and I put in some red oxide again from Sophie's craft store across the hall here and uh, what I did was took these little slabs put the red oxide in mixed it with the epoxy and poured these little uh, little guys thinking I was gonna make little owl owl jewelry pendants but you know what happened instead of making owls we made hearts I can't. You see that? So now we've got uh, a whole bunch of little hearts. There's. There you go. See that? Isn't that cool? So this is a little uh, little uh, pendant that Willow wears. Sophie made herself some little dangly earrings. That you can't see very good. There you go. See that? Yeah. So, there you go. Like I said, I thought I was making owls and they turned out to be hearts, which is just as cool because they weren't for me. <laughs> so, that's another project. It wasn't a fail, but I also didn't figure it was good enough to make a video out of. So, next. All right, this next one is, uh, I think it's my all-time favorite. So, Wood Carving Illustrated, uh, summer 2010. Uh, Larry Wolterstorff, <laughs> Wolterstorff, uh, made this little uh, fun little thing using magnets. And uh, I guess it's just one of these continuous motion things. So I got looking at that and I got thinking about that I thought how can I apply that and make it fun and uh, that's what I made. I got an old maple branch on a little live edge chunk of walnut and uh, took a little pumpkin. Look at that. Isn't that fun? And it'll keep going. It starts spinning and turning, but it can't go s straight. It can't hang down. It has to. It has to be repelled. Put the magnets in reverse, so it can never go back where it belongs. But what I did with that is, you can see the little piece in the bottom. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't want to. Uh, I had. You, you got to have the. Uh, the magnets close to the surface but you don't want to know that there's magnets under here so in this case I just took a router took a half inch uh, flat bottom router bit and just kept going down a little bit at a time a little bit of time until I left one eighth of an inch there and that's the size that I did and then I just put a plate so I just glued the magnets in so they're really they're only an eighth of an inch under the surface of this piece of walnut but uh, I just I didn't want to get another piece of walnut out, so I just put a chunk of maple in the bottom. But anyway, you're not supposed to look at that, but anyway, I just thought that was so much fun. So I posted all this stuff on Instagram, and everybody in the brother says I should be making all different kinds of things. But for this season, I thought the pumpkin was a good idea, and even if I had done like a, a pumpkin with a face, the only issue to me was that it keeps turning. So a lot of people thought a ghost would be a real cool idea, but uh, like I said, anything that has a direction or a face, it's going to keep spinning around. So you choose, but who knows, I may do that video again, but 
again, you can't make the video if you've never done it before. And I uh, just wanted to test it and see how it worked. And I mean, this sits on the uh, this sits on Sophie's little shelf at the, above the sink in the kitchen, and where she keeps all her little goodies. And you can't walk by without playing with it. So yeah, I really like that. So that's that one. Absolutely useless, but so much fun. I love it when it just goes like just ran random. Look at that. Anyway, besides uh, Mr. Pumpkinhead, I was also did some other little whittling. Kind of went a little, a little bit Harley Refsel on this guy. This was uh, I guess this was just last night I finished this guy. So little guy with the vest there. I tried to kind of. In the spirit of Harley, I wanted to, I tried to do a little bit more flat planing type uh, carving, so I got a lot more real flat f facets on there. So, and then this is what I've been playing with today, just for fun. A little piece of pine. Oops. I might make him purple, make a little purple people, purple people eater, but he's kind of cute. So, and again, this is pine. People always ask me, they can't get basswood, but pine does carve really nice. This was just a piece of 1x2. I, I made something at work and uh, had a little scrap of 1x2 pine and uh, I thought, well, I'm not going to throw that out and I've probably got about eight guys like that in there. So, carve some pine. Oh, and the one thing I almost forgot was uh, I made a new tool rack here. I only use about four or five of these pieces, <laughs> but every once in a while something creeps up that I, I use a different tool. But I had all these in a drawer over here, and I thought that's ridiculous to have them rolling around rubbing against each other. And again, people wanted me to make a video of this, but it's just too simple to make a video. This is four feet long, and basically it's just holes drilled. I think these are inch and a quarter, I think these are an inch, these are half an inch. And uh, you know, different size handles, different size holes. You can put these in. That's the, so simple. Now on this length, I didn't want to. Uh, here, I'll show you. So what I did wrong is I, I cut these all these boards. These are just glued and, and just pinned with 18 gauge pins on the sides. But I drilled the whole board, and I soon realized when I put it together that oh I'm a dummy I forgot to put a, a support in the middle because that definitely is too long you should never be over like 20-24 inches without some kind of support for sagging eventually so what I did here after I had all the holes drilled I couldn't block off the holes so I just put a half inch dowel right there through and that uh, that gives support so it can it can never sag or or move around so Simple fix, simple little project, too simple for uh, for video's sake, but yeah, everybody is afraid to make them, but it's so easy, it's not even funny. If you were super creative, you could dish out the holes straight through in the bottom, but when I use pine, as you can see, the knife, the point goes in, and uh, it's not going anywhere. It's works for me. In fact, I kind of like it because in, in the long run it gets all beat up and worn and uh, looks old and rustic and I'm all about old and rustic, especially when I look in the mirror. So, all right. So, I think we covered it all. We got our pumpkin head, which is just last year's pumpkin video on a man's body, which is carve a little man video. And that's basically what he would end up being, a little guy like that. All right, we got our little uh, cedar log acorn head, our little carvings. We got our little our little walnut uh, shell earrings, and my little pendulum magnetized pumpkin, which is my favorite thing. <laughs> So instead of uh, five different boring videos, uh, I give you one. So I don't know. Hope you like the kind of thing. It was uh, 
was kind of an afterthought today. I was like, oh man, like I need a video. Not that I, I'm committed to giving you videos every week, but I kind of like to do it if I can. So I thought, this is a video. All these things make up a video. So there you go. I've watched worse videos. I know that. So anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. See you guys.